The data layer is a piece of code that is used to send data from your website to a tag management system like Google Tag Manager. This concept can be a bit difficult to understand because it involves coding. So if you're not a developer, it can be a bit hard to understand the first time you see it, but it's a piece of code. You install it on your website. It is used to send data from your website to Google Tag Manager, and then you can send the data to the platforms that you want. In this example, we send the data to Google Analytics, to Google Ads, and to Meta, but you can also add other tags on Google Tag Manager to send the data to other platforms. The data layer implementation depends on your website technology. If you are using a content management system, CMS, like for example, WordPress, Shopify, or PrestaShop, there are plugins available that can do the job for you and that can implement the data layer on your website. For example, if you're using WordPress, there is this plugin, Google Tag Manager for WordPress, that you can install from the WordPress plugins library. On Shopify, you have this plugin, adding well GTM and data layer. And on PrestaShop, you have this one, Google Tag Manager Enhanced E-Commerce, GTM plus GA4. This one for WordPress and this one for Shopify, uh, both are free, but this one is available at 167 euros for PrestaShop. So this is if you're using a CMS, but if you have a uh, custom website, even if you have a single page application, you will need to write very specific documentation for the data layer, and you will send this documentation to your developers so they can implement it on the website. So let's say you have an e-commerce website on which your users can log in, and you want to give the information to Google Tag Manager, whether the user, the current user is logged in or not. If you want to do this, you will need to use the data layer. Here, this is your page inside the head you have your data layer implementation and you have your google tag manager code i'm sending the information logged in to the data layer so the value is either true or false in google tag manager i will be able to read this value here and trigger some tags accordingly okay so this is the first example where in this data layer push there are no event key so it's only a logged in key and I implement this before Google Tag Manager so that on each data layer event inside Google Tag Manager, I will be able to access this information. For example, here the user purchased a product and the data layer implementation is a bit different here because I write the data layer implementation after Google Tag Manager code because it has an event key, okay? So you, you just have to remember that if your data layer push doesn't contain an event key, you can push it before Google Tag Manager code on your page. But if it has an event key, you need to push this information after Google Tag Manager code. So this is the first thing to understand. There is one thing that I sometimes see on blog posts uh, on the web and sometimes on implementations and that you shouldn't do. It is this implementation where you, you have data layer equals and then an array like this. Before switching to practice, you need to know how to make sure that the data layer is correctly implemented on your website. And for this, you need to install a Chrome extension to inspect your data layer. So my favorite one is called Adsworth Data Layer Inspector, which you see on, on the right. It is logging to the web console, your data layer events. And it is the most, let's say, convenient for me. There are other Chrome extensions that you may be interested in. The first one is Data Layer Checker Plus, which is doing the same job, and also Simple Data Layer Viewer. And here uh, you can see the data layer inside your extension. You can test these three extensions and find the right one for you. Now it's time to practice. So we're now inside Google Tag Manager, and I have a demo G4 property available here. So I'm going to open the preview. You can see my website, my demo website. And if I open my console, you can see that I'm using the Data Layer Inspector. And here I can see my logged in to true, which is what I've pushed from my data layer implementation. And here you can see events that have been pushed from Google Tag Manager code. The color here is different depending on whether there is a, an event key inside my data layer push or not. Inside my GTM preview, I can see all the information here that was sent through the data layer. And here, the first one is called message. And it's called message because in the data layer push, there are no event keys. And if I open it up, you can see here that there is this logged in information to true. As I said before, it is very important that this data layer push happens before all other information sent to the data layer so that on every other event here, I can access this logged in information. 
So let's do this. Let's create a new tag. I'm going to install G4. So let's select Google tag. I've already copied my measurement ID. Let's trigger this on initialization all pages. And here under the shared event settings, I'm going to add a new parameter, which is called user underscore properties. And then inside user properties, I will add a property called, let's say logged in. And here as a value, I will take this value from the data layer. So I'll create a new variable. I'm going to select a data layer variable. I'm going to enter the path to the variable. Okay. And I name it DLV for data layer variable. Okay. And then let's open the preview again. And here, if you look at the page view event sent to GA4, you can see that the user property logged in is sent and the value is true. Inside your GA4 property, you can go to admin and you can open the debug view. And here you can see the events that we sent and you can also see this user property logged in to true here. So all the events sent contain this property. Now in this second example, I got a purchase event which is triggered after the code of GTM. And that is why you have first this event, gtm.js, and then you have the purchase event that is pushed from my data layer implementation. And here, if I check inside my preview, I've got three events from GTM. And then the fourth one is my purchase event. And this is just an event. I don't pass any parameters. So here, how you can use this inside GTM. So you have to remember that if you have the event key here, you can trigger a tag from this event. And if you don't have an event key, you can use this data to populate your tags like we did with the first example with the logged in data. So here it's not available anymore in the data layer. So I can remove this and I can trigger a, let's say a GA4 purchase event. Here I'm going to put my measurement ID. Here the event name is going to be purchase. So here I'm telling Google Tag Manager to send to this GA4 property and with this event name here in the trigger, this is where you're going to make the link between the data layer and GTM. And here I'm going to choose a custom event trigger because this is an event from my own data layer implementation. And here, this is the event name that I push inside the key event of the data layer. So here it's purchase. And here I call this DLE for data layer event and then the name of the event. Let's click save and here name it GA4 event purchase and then click save. When this is done, you can open the preview again. And here you can see that on the purchase event, so the unknown tag type is a um, bug from GTM. Here you can see that all tag was triggered on the purchase event. And here you can see that a purchase hit was sent to uh, GA4. So far, I showed you some basic examples so that you can understand this concept behind this data layer push that you may have encountered on your uh, analytics journey. But the um, most important thing to know about the data layer is that there is a standard from GA4 that is used on most websites. And this standard is available here. So I'll put a link in the description to this page. But for example, if we take the purchase event, you can see that you have the parameters required and the items parameters. And then you have an example of a data layer push. And this is what you should respect on your website when you're doing a data layer implementation. So if you're using a plugin, the plugin will most likely follow this standard. But if you're doing your own implementation or you're writing a documentation, you have to follow this standard so that most of the things you will configure later will work properly.